Have you ever wondered which day or these from the worst days in Nigeria's history and what actually happened on those days? Well, in this video, we will bring to your view the worst days in Nigeria's history and what actually happened on these days. Please stay with me. Hello, 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 His Plus. Welcome to His Pool Media. Gabriel here. My analytics indicates that 95% of folks watching my videos are not subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? Let me know in the comment section. Or else, please subscribe and enable notification for more videos from us. We begin on Saturday, January 15, 1966. This day would mark a turning point in Nigeria's history and has contributed significantly in shaping the Nigeria of today. But why do we consider this day one of the worst days in Nigeria's history? It all began in the early hours of January 15, 1966, when a group of mutinous junior officers of the Nigerian army took arms against the authorities in the first and unforgettable military coup in Nigeria. The coup, which was led by Major Chuku Makaduna Nziogu and Emmanuel Ifeajuna, murdered 22 persons, including the country's prime minister, many top politicians, senior military officers, in some cases, their wives included, and sentinels on duty. It will interest you to know also that other unwholesome events that will take place in Nigeria, like the July 1966 counter-coup, the Nigerian civil war, and even the lingering ethnic mistrust has its root directly or indirectly from this coup. In a two-day period leading up to their capture, the coup plotters targeted the cities of Kaduna, Ibadan, and Lagos, in addition to blocking the Niger and Benue rivers. Johnson Thomas Aguironsi, a general officer commanding of the Nigerian army, was forced to assume charge of a nation in upheaval and unintentionally placed Nigeria's developing democracy on hold. This marked the end of the First Republic in Nigeria. So, do you think this day is qualified to make this list? Let us know in the comment section. July 29. This day is qualified to be the worst day in the history of Nigeria. Two significant events happened on this day, but in different years. First, the July 1966 counter coup, considered to be the bloodiest coup in Nigeria's history, happened on this day in 1966. On the 29th of July 1966, officers of Northern Extraction executed what would be known as the Northern Counter Coup or the July Remarch. This coup resulted in the mother of Nigeria's first military head of state, General Johnson Thomas Aguironsi and Lieutenant Colonel Adekunle Fajui, who was hosting the visiting Ironsi in Ibadan by disgruntled Northern Non Commission officers. The coup was masterminded by Lieutenant Colonel Moritala Mohamed and was executed by Major Theophilus Yakubu Danjuma, popularly known as T.Y. Danjuma. The July Remarch was the second of many military coups that happened in Nigeria. Upon the termination of Ironsi's government, Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowon was appointed head of state by the coup conspirators. Secondly, General Yakubu Gowon, who took over from Aguironsi, was ousted in another military coup on July 29, this time in 1975. This day becomes a significant day in the history of Nigeria. The coup was led by General Moritara Mohamed. For details of this coup, see the video here or a link in my description. July 6, 1967 to January 15, 1970 the days of the Nigerian civil war. These days witnessed the brutal civil war between Nigeria and the breakaway eastern region, also known as the Republic of Biafra. The Nigerian civil war or the Biafran war started on the 6th of July 1967 with an artillery bombardment of Kakim, a town in the Ogoja province of Cross River State, and a follow-up attack on Isuka. It has been estimated that over 3 million people died from this war, including women and children. One of the federal government's war strategy was economic strangulation and starvation. The government blockade food supply to Biafra land, leaving the people starving. In the increasingly vicious war that followed, the federal military government with its superior firepower ruthlessly drove back the Biafran fighters. Unimaginable hardship ensued for the civilian population of Biafra. 
Massacres were reported as the federal military government soldiers advanced and famine took hold after the Nigerian government blockaded Biafra and banned Red Cross aid. As the world sat on its hands and ignored the developing humanitarian disaster, hundreds of thousands of people died of malnutrition before Biafran resistance was eliminated in 1970. The Republic of Biafra ceases to exist after its officers surrendered on January 12, 1970. The days of the Civil War are probably some of the worst days in the history of Nigeria. October 7, 1967, the day of Asaba massacre. Federal troops entered Asaba around October 5th and began ransacking houses and killing civilians claiming they were Biafran soldiers. Eyewitness account suggests that several hundred innocent males may have been killed individually and in groups at various locations in the town. The high point of the killings happened at the community square in Ogbeosowa, where villagers assembled in the morning of October 7, hoping to end the violence through a show of support for one Nigeria. Hundreds of men, women and children, many wearing the ceremonial aquaculture attire, paraded along the main street, singing and dancing, chanting, One Nigeria, One Nigeria. When the federal soldiers arrived, men and teenage boys were separated from women and young children. Then, others were given, reportedly by second-in-command Major Ibrahim Taiwo, to open fire, killing an estimated number of 700 to 800 people. The actual cause of this massacre has not been ascertained, but researchers believe it may not be unconnected with the killing of many northern leaders in the January 15, 1966 coup led by Major Kanuna Nziogu, who happened to come from Asaba. You can see more on this video in the card displayed here or a link in my description. July 28th to October 28, 2014, the days of Ebola virus disease in Nigeria. On the 20th of July 2014, an acutely ill traveler from Liberia arrived at the international airport in Lagos and was confirmed to have Ebola virus disease after being admitted to a private hospital. This in the patient Patrick Sawyer potentially exposed 72 persons at the airport and the hospital. The Federal Ministry of Health, with guidance from the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, declared an Ebola emergency. The Indes patient died on the 25th of July 2014. Although authorities responded to the outbreak rapidly, the days that followed were difficult days for Nigerians, especially those living in the metropolitan city of Lagos, where the outbreak was severe. The first known Nigerian to die of the Ebola virus disease, a nurse who attended to Patrick Sawyer, was recorded on the 5th of August 2014. The nurse was Obi Justina Ejelonu. Subsequently, Dr. Ameyo Adedevo, a doctor whom many considered the hero of Ebola in Nigeria, died of the disease. On the 22nd of September 2014, the Nigerian Health Ministry announced, As of today, there is no case of Ebola in Nigeria. All listed contacts who were under surveillance have been followed up for 21 days. According to the World Health Organization, 20 cases and 8 deaths had been confirmed, including the imported case. The World Health Organization's representative in Nigeria officially declared Nigeria to be free of Ebola on the 20th of October after no new active cases were reported in a follow-up contact, stating that it was a spectacular success story for Nigeria. The days of Ebola saw Nigerians bathing salt water in a bid to prevent the spread of the disease. Whether these had any impact in the containment of the disease has never been proven scientifically. Kindly let us know in the comment section if you had actually taken your bath with salt water during this time. April 14, 2014, the Chibok girls kidnapping. On the 9th of April 14 and 15, 2014, 276 mainly Christian female students between the ages of 16 and 18 were abducted from the government girls' secondary school in Chibok, Bruno states. The girls went to take their physics final examination, even though the school 
had been shut for four weeks owing to deteriorating security situations. 57 of the schoolgirls escaped immediately following the incident by jumping from the trucks on which they were being transported. This incident was greeted with both local and international outcry, calling on the government of President Goodluck Jonathan to rescue the girls. The thieves believe in some quarters that this incident may have caused Jonathan his second-term ambition in 2015. As of 14th of April 2021, seven years after the initial kidnapping, it was reported that over 100 of the school girls were still missing. Since the 2014 abduction, several other mass abductions of school children have taken place in the northwestern part of the country. We consider the day of this abduction one of the worst days in the history of Nigeria. Please let us know in the comment section as well if this day is qualified to make this list. 5th of May 2010, the death of Umaru Musa Yaradua. Umaru Musa Yaradua died on the 5th of May 2010. This day is considered one of the worst days in the history of Nigeria. Till today, Nigerians still believe he was the best president of Nigeria since 1999 when democracy returns. He was the president of Nigeria from 2007 till his death in 2010. But what really happened? After several medical trips abroad, including a visit to Germany during campaigns in 2007, Yaradua returned to Abuja on the 24th of February 2010 under the cover of darkness. His state of health was unclear, but there was speculation that he was still on a life support machine. Various political and religious figures in Nigeria had visited him during his illness, believing he would make a recovery. But Yaradua died on the 5th of May at the Asorok Presidential Villa. An Islamic burial took place on the 6th of May in his hometown in Katsina. The federal government of Nigeria declared a seven day mourning period to mourn the late leader. He was succeeded by his vice president, Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan was the acting president at the time. And to know how each and every Nigerian president died, please check the video displayed here. For more interesting stories like this, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to like this video, share with friends and family on social media. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace.